Is that correct? Or? Uh, the jury is still out, so to okay. say. <laughs> it may have reinforced the extinctions or it may have prevented the return of species. But as far as I'm concerned, looking at the foraminifera before, there's nothing changing in the environment, what I can discover. And we now exactly know where the Deccan traps came in, because the, uh, one of the soluble components in the Deccan traps uh, are uh, osmium isotopes. And uh, they're totally different when they come from land, and they're totally from the ones that come from the deep mantle or a meteorite. So if you mix a deep mantle with uh, sources from the continent, you see changes in the osmium isotope composition. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as the Deccan traps start extruding, and you measure the osmium isotope composition in the oceans, you see it going down yeah, from yeah. continental values towards mantle values. But that's a full 200 to 300,000 years before they went extinct. Okay, but is this realization that there was this extremely abrupt extinction, essentially, is that at this time uh, something that a lot of people already know, or is this a sort of new realization? No, it was a, a, a German named Schindewolf already suggested it in the 50s, but he was talking about comets and had no evidence whatsoever. And at the same time, Dale Russell, a Canadian paleontologist, was saying that the dinosaurs were wiped out suddenly by a supernova explosion. He had no evidence for that, but he sounds argued... Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> sounds pretty cool, yeah. So I like that idea. I mean, at first when I saw that, I said, okay, you're supernova. I, mean, I met someone who, who's, who's still convinced that the PETM is caused by a supernova, but that's a different story. I, I thought once that the Permian-Thoracic boundary is due to a supernova okay. explosion. So the chances are there. So